Hello, my friends. We are here to tour a 1975 Brooklyn SV1. That's too small of a vehicle. Let's take a look at the real one real quick. We are going to show you all the features and functions of this amazing vehicle. The Brooklyn SV1 started out as a concept, approximately 1972, when Malcolm Brooklyn wanted to design one of the safest vehicles that has ever been made. One of the overriding factors that the car had to have was those amazing gullwing doors. These doors are powered gullwing doors with roll-down windows incorporated into them. Most other cars ever manufactured that had gullwing doors did not have those features. Gullwing cars are typically very safe cars because the sill line of the door, where the door meets the body, is so high that if uh, a car hits you from the side, uh, it's, it's hitting the frame of the car right there, and it's not going to cave in on you. And these doors weigh 90 pounds each, and it has a big steel um, reinforcement uh, bar inside the door, so that the, uh, the car has a really hard time collapsing. The roof structure and the, uh, the part of the car where it comes down to meet the rear tires back there almost, uh, there's, it's, it's a fully integrated roll cage built into the Brooklyn SV-1. As for safety on the front or rear of the car, these are urethane bumpers mounted on Delco shock absorbers. And these things, I mean, these, these things are, are, are really tough, really tough bumpers. I'd, I'd hate to see a car uh, get hit by this thing. The rear bumper is the same thing, just a solid, solid piece of urethane mounted on Delco shock absorbers. It can take a pretty good hit without being damaged at all. If you happen to park too close to a car next to you, you only need 12 inches of clearance to the car next to you in a parking lot. So you can get out of this car in a lot uh, shorter of a, of a space than you could in a standard car. One just has to push the button on the side of the car here and the door will come down. And again, just one more touch the button and the door will, uh, will raise itself again. The doors are operated via pneumatic struts, so the car actually has an air tank on board. Uh, this particular car has been modified so that if you ever get a flat tire or something, you can hook up the air hose, which I happen to have in the back of the car, and uh, you can uh, fill up your tire if you really need to. As for the cockpit of the SV-1, some pretty interesting features inside the car, namely the flip digit radio with clock. Just like your old clock radios that you had when you were kids, you know, for those of you who remember them. It's a flip digit radio uh, with, a, with a clock in there, uh, along with your air conditioning and heating and uh, various knobs. you got your uh, electrical uh, amperage reading, your oil pressure, uh, temperature for water, and your fuel gauge. Uh, oil pressure light, high beam, door jar light, brakes, fasten seatbelts, and rear defog light. You got your tack, and you got your 160 mile per hour speedometer. Uh, it doesn't quite hit 160, but it does, it's, a, it's a pretty respectable car. It, it does have a 351 cubic inch of V8 under the hood. This is basically a very stock Bricklin. This is pretty much the way it rolled off the assembly line. Uh, it even has the uh, original uh, stickers on the air conditioning and uh, you know various other other places. Uh, standard 351 cubic inch V8 Ford drivetrain. The outside surface of the car is fiberglass, but it's acrylically reinforced, which makes it stronger than fiberglass or steel by itself. Also, the color of the car is the acrylic. This car is a 1975, 
and it's never been painted in all of its life. This is still the, re the original acrylic exterior. Uh, according to the brochure, if you ever get a scratch in it, you can just buff it out and it turns brand new again. It's kind of like a, the way a bathtub uh, is, is made, so it's a pretty durable uh, finish for a car. I think it's the only one that I know of that has been ever manufactured this way. The car did come in five different colors from the factory. Uh, green, white, suntan, orange, and red. Um, pretty neat colors for first time. There is no cigarette lighter or ashtray in the car as Malcolm Bricklin didn't think it was safe to drive a car while smoking. Pretty interesting for 1975. Depending on the various numbers, uh, from about 2,854 to 2,897 uh, Bricklins were produced between 1974 and 1975. According to Brooklyn Organization, which is the club that we uh, belong to, there's about 1,500 cars known to still exist on the planet. The model SV1 stands for Safety Vehicle 1. Again, Malcolm wanted a very safe car, and he, uh, he sure got it. All of the cars were actually built in Canada, uh, in New Brunswick, uh, St. John, up in, up in Canada. Uh, he put about $26 million into the company and uh, wanted another $10 million to keep going, but the Canadian government finally shut it down because they were only making 15 cars a day and they had to make like 55 or 60 cars or something like that to, uh, to break even. So they never quite broke even on the car, unfortunately because it would have been a fantastic addition to uh, the Chevys and the uh, Fords of today. If one wishes to close the car door from the inside, all you have to do is push this button and the door, door goes down. Of course, you just need to push the button again and the door will again go up for you. Push the button here real quick. There we go. Fully automatic going doors. While it's not recommended, one can even drive around with the going doors up since they're only out approximately 12 inches. But again, it's, it's more advisable to drop the doors and just continue along. So we will uh, do just that. The rear hatch area is big enough to put a lot of groceries in or whatever whatever you, whatever you need. Uh, it does store a lot of a lot of space there. Anyway, I guess we'll uh, we'll wrap this up now. And that, my friends, concludes the tour of a 1975 Brooklyn SV1. Take care and have fun.